Okay, when we left off, we just got done defining the Lagrange finite strain tensor. And if you're like me, um, and I was on the other side of the fence, I guess, it's a little disappointing. You're like, well, I've never, we're relating the difference squared of two differential vectors. Uh, how in the world does that help me uh, to define strain at all? So let me just remind you where we left off, and then we'll pick up and try to explain a little bit about the meaning of, of the Lagrange finite strain tensor and hopefully relate it back to some strain measures that you're familiar with from your undergraduate. So we defined a measure of change in length of a differential vector during deformation as, as I'm showing you here, dc squared minus dx squared is equal to 2 times eij, where eij was that Lagrange finite strain tensor, times dxi, times dxj. And we had defined the Lagrange finite strain tensor eij as one half times fki fkj minus delta ij. So f, remember, is the deformation gradient tensor. Okay, so we want to we want to make we want to make a little bit of meaning of this. So let's just say here, what does this mean? Um, in terms of um, quantities that we can actually measure. So in terms of measurable quantities. Okay, so what we're going to do first, and just a, a few more manipulations to get there, we're, we're going to divide uh, this top expression here by the quantity dx squared, the magnitude of dx squared. So um, so we'll say here, let's go ahead and divide by the magnitude dx squared. And so that gives me dc squared divided by dx squared minus dx squared over dx squared is just 1. And that's going to be equal to 2 eij. And I'm free now. I can distribute one of the dx uh, magnitudes under this dxi and the other under this dxj. So I can write this as dxi over dx times dxj over dx. These are vector magnitudes. Okay. So what have I done? Well, let's let's first look at this right hand side. What is the what is the quantity when I take a vector and divide it by its magnitude? Well, it's a unit vector then, and it's just a unit vector in the direction of the original vector. So we would actually just go ahead and call that an i. Right, the unit vector in the direction of interest. And similarly, that becomes nj, the unit vector in the direction of interest. So n is some value that we choose, some direction we choose. We want to know something about the strain in. Here's how we do it. OK, uh, I, want to ha I need to introduce one more definition. And I'm going to define something called the stretch. Okay, so what is the stretch? The stretch formally is the change in length, the magnitude, sorry, not the change in length, rather, but the length of the new segment divided by the length of the original segment. So what does that mean? That means a stretch of one means that nothing happened. And a stretch of more than one means that we have a positive a stretch. And a stretch of less than one means that we're having a, some sort of a compressive. So how could we, we could also write this if these are the, the change or the, rather the length of the new divided by the length of the old. We could write this in our sort of uh, freshman notation as L divided by L naught. So if we use that definition, we can then rewrite the equation above as, so this is squared now, so this looks like lambda squared minus 1 is equal to 2 eij 
N I N J. Okay. So hopefully we're starting to get somewhere and now something like L over L naught is a quantity that I can measure. Okay. Okay. So what does this equation tell us before we, we move on to anything else? This says that this implies that, that the stretch in any direction N Uh, can be computed from the Lagrange finite strain tensor. From EIJ. Okay, so that's something that we so that we can measure now, right? Let me give you a little example of how we would uh, compute that. So here's an example. Let's go ahead and consider the case where n is just going to be in our one of our coordinate directions so it'll be one zero zero let's say okay then we can write that the stretch um, squared minus one is going to be equal to if i if i go ahead and expand that out using uh, n1 is 1, n2 is 0, n3 is 0. I end up just recovering 2 e11. So I could rewrite that as uh, lambda is equal to the square root of 2 e11 minus 1. Or equivalently that e11 is equal to one half times lambda squared minus one. Okay, so I want to give you so that's how we would use it, and I hope you agree that that lambda is a quantity that we could measure experimentally, uh, and we can hopefully understand um, uh, conceptually. But I want to give you one note here. So note that lambda uh, represents and I've said it before, but I want to reiterate it. The stretch in the direction of N. Okay. So even though we've used this example to to show that E11 happens to be to give us the stretch in the direction of N, we could choose any N we wanted and use this equation to compute the stress in that direction. So regardless of how complex the loading state or anything like that, we could get the stretch in, in that direction. Okay, now let's, let's finally talk about the definition of uh, strain from our freshman year. So here we go, we wanna, now let's look at That we'll call the nominal or engineering strain a definition from your you know your your freshman year your mechanics of material class okay so Presumably you define that, we'll call it E sub N for the, the nominal strain, was equal to delta L over L naught, right? Where L naught was the original length, delta L was the change in length. So we could write that as L, the current length, minus L naught, the original length, divided by L naught, which we can then go ahead and write as L over L naught minus 1. Okay? So... What do, we, what do we know about this quantity here? Well, that's the definition of stretch. So we can write that as lambda. So we can then go ahead and solve for lambda. And we write that lambda is going to be equal to that nominal strain plus 1. Okay? So now we can substitute this equation back into uh, what we had up here right 
we can substitute it back into this equation right here and ask how does this EIJ term that we defined relate to the delta L over L term that we're familiar with. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and substitute uh, into the expression uh, for the Lagrange finite strain tensor. Okay, and we end up with lambda squared, which now is en, or epsilon n, plus 1. Now that's the quantity squared. Minus 1 is going to be equal to 2 eij ni nj. Okay? Let's go ahead and expand this out uh, so we can just foil it out. Epsilon n squared plus 2 epsilon n uh, plus 1 minus 1 equals 2 epsilon, 2 e rather, ij and i and j. So our 1s will cancel out, and I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by 2, and it, I end up being able to write epsilon n plus 1 half epsilon n squared is going to be equal to eij n i n j okay so we're almost there we're almost there but now we need to make some specialization so how about for a small strain case so this means that we're probably going to have epsilon n maybe is is on the order of one percent or something like that which is typical for the small strain what happens when we do that? Well, then the term 1 half epsilon n squared uh, becomes negligible. Negligible. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that we can then write that epsilon n, the nominal delta L over L that you learned long ago, is approximately equal to E i j n i n j. Okay? Okay, so what we could do here is we could go ahead and plug in uh, n is equal to 1, 0, 0, and get that the nominal strain in the, the one direction is e11 we could do it for 0 1 0 and find that the nominal strain in the two direction is uh, e22 and similarly for e33 okay so what does this mean this means that e11 e22 and e33 give the familiar delta L over L uh, in the coordinate directions uh, for the small strain case. Okay? But the thing to note is that you have a lot more information than just that. So I think people are used to uh, maybe thinking of a uniaxial tension test and saying, well, I'm going to pull on it and I'm going to measure delta L over L. That's fine. But, but uh, it's important that this expression has a lot more power than that. It says I can find delta L over L under any load case for any direction. So if I have my strain tensor... Uh, and I know the direction that I'm interested in, I can always compute uh, delta L over L. In the case where it's not small strain, then we have to talk about a stretch, as we already talked about previously. But that's, that's the link between the strain tensor that we've just developed and the 
the um, the quantities that we're familiar with from experiment and, and uh, maybe maybe some equations and modeling. Uh, what we're going to cover in the next uh, module is, you know, sometimes we don't always want to use the deformation gradient tensor for computing. Um, maybe in this case, the Lagrange finite strain tensor. So in the next lecture, we're going to talk about how to use um, uh, displacement measures as opposed to, to deformation gradient measures to compute the same strains.